All right, guys, so uh, here go my primaries. Uh, I decided to stay with the, the, the same platform as far as the HNK uh, series because of magazine compatibility. Uh, I really didn't want to get into another platform where I had to buy a whole entire another set of magazines. I run about 9 to 11 magazines on my loadout at any given time. So I didn't want to have to repurchase stuff. Um, if you see my YouTube video on how to magazine P Mag, I had to shave this down right here to get this to fit into the um, 416 and the M27. It's a little slight notch bevel that's right at the top of the magazine that you have to take down to get it to fit. So, <coughs> excuse me, uh, they they fit perfectly in there. Haven't had any fitting issues. They stay in there, they don't fall out, nothing like that. So, let's talk about the 416. Um, this one's kind of infamous because I fell out of a tree with this one and broke it in half. It's pretty clean. And uh, the thing about it is that uh, it's got a little bit more sentimental value out of my guns. As far as internals go, we do have a Lonex high-speed torque motor in here. Um, we have uh, Siege Tech gears in here. We do have uh, a Chimera 2 MOSFET in here as well. Uh, we will have a more part list in the descriptions below if you want to know exactly what's in here. Uh, as far as hop-up unit that's in here, it's still stock hop-up unit. I'm happy with the, the VFC hop-up unit. We'll uh, hop up unit. I like it a lot. I have it paired up with a Maple Leaf 75 degree bucking with a standard nub and with a, a Angel type board uh, barrel. Uh, it does extend a little bit further into the suppressor. I also have a replica T1. Now this T1 is a little different than your traditional T1. Uh, this one has a on and off switch instead of the dial that adjusts the uh, high low setting. Um, it also has a uh, media low and high button and then it has uh, adjustment buttons for high and low to whatever brightness you want it to be set at. I forgot the name of this but this one's a little bit more unique. It also comes with a, a threaded end where you could thread on a magnifier onto this which I use sometimes when all the time because it looks kind of funny on the gun. Uh, we do have a VFC PEC box, which is a working light and laser. Um, then we have a Surefire replica Scout light with a Surefire suppressor. And then we do have uh, a vertical Magpul grip on here. Another thing too, I changed out the pistol grip to your standard A1 grip. I don't like the back hump for the VFC hand grip personally. It feels weird in my hand and makes my wrist hurt when I shoot with this gun. Other than that, this is my CQB gun. Uh, it's shooting at a consistent anywhere between uh, 350 to uh, probably about 337-38, which is nice, which uh, I only use when we're going to Airsoft Arena or Fear City since they have a 350 blanket uh, FPS. So that's what I use for my CQB gun, but it can still hang outside. So I'm okay with it if I even go outside. Uh, then the next one we're going to talk about is my limited edition M27. Um, I did have an M27 conversion kit for the 416 back in the day. But when we came out, came back home from uh, Blue Gray and I saw this was coming out, I decided to pick this up. Um, I tried to spec it out closest to the new uh, IAR uh, that the Marines are carrying for uh, their uh, assault gun, which uh, is the role I play when we're in the field. Um, it comes with a replica ACOG scope with a RMR on top, which is very cool. Uh, I like that scope a lot. It's a four times zoom and it's a, uh, a green fiber for the reticle, so when you're in high light. Um, situations you'll see it light up which is nice because it doesn't depend on batteries like the RMR it does depend on batteries but you can turn it on and off so it lasts a little bit longer 
uh, also with it. I have a, another Alex Co. IR patch again. It's repping ST04. And then we up front we have the PEC 16. The nice thing about this replica PEC 16, which is pretty cool, this is the brightest PEC box I've ever seen, one of the brightest light. Uh, it works very well. Um, it has a blue light setting, it also has a white light setting. It has a red laser on there as well. The laser is not as strong, but the light on that is pretty oppressive. This gun I have upgraded myself internally. Uh, Gino did the tech work on this one because he's, he's been helping me learn how to tech on the team too. So if he's not around, you know, I could be the next guy in line to help the team out if something goes down with one of our guns. So we don't always have to depend on, you know, one person. You know, one is none, two is one. Um, nice thing about this one, this has pretty much virtually the same thing as this, but we do have a higher uh, gear ratio on this one. This one is a 10 to 11 ratio versus this one is a 10 to 13 ratio. Uh, they both have Chimera MOSFETs in them. They fit in there pretty good. We I use 11-1 LiPo batteries with these. These are the they they have the uh, three uh, cell batteries that fit in each one of the ports in the back. Very nice and snug. Uh, I can't fully collapse the stocks with those batteries as well. Uh, haven't had an issue with the Chimera. Um, it was a little worries when we first got them because of space, but uh, they have done well and I have no complaints about the Chimera. Those are my AEGs, so uh, if you have any questions, in the description we'll have an actual part listing, uh, pistons, you know, what we use to shim them, and give you the full specs on both of the guns. Thanks for watching.